please take responsibility. Paul uh, Jim Alistair. Uh, Acting Speaker, on this, the 7th of December, exactly 100 years ago, in 1922, the elected unionist representatives to the predecessor of this House, the Northern Ireland Parliament, on that very day, unanimously declined to leave the Union of the United Kingdom and to join the Irish Free State. One hundred years later, it remains the unanimous view of every unionist elected representative that the protocol is unacceptable because of the manner and extent to which it dissipates and disrespects that very same union. That fundamental has not changed and will not change for those of us who are, by conviction, unionists. But what is the union? Well, David Trimble quite rightly said, it's the Acts of Union. What do they do? Well, whether it was the 1707 Act of Union with Scotland or the 1800 Act of Union, they created a union of the United Kingdom which was based on two premises, a political union, a parliamentary union, where you created a single sovereign parliament, and an economic union whereby you created a single market, an economic union, a single trading area, which was the United Kingdom. And that, of course, was premised upon Article 6 of the Acts of Union. Last week I sat in the Supreme Court listening to Her Majesty's government barrister, and barristers only speak upon instructions, arguing that the protocol, and in so arguing he confirmed everything that we have ever said about it, that the protocol disapplies Article 6 of the Acts of Union. What does disapply mean? It's pretty obvious what it means. It sets it aside, overrides it, subjugates it. We can all understand that. But what does it do? It takes that key component of the Act of Union, that of the Economic Union, and, and sets it aside and says it no longer applies. There no longer is a single market in the United Kingdom. There no longer is the freedom to trade without unfettered between and within the all of the United Kingdom. And indeed, it goes further than that because it says GB is now a foreign country whose goods must be checked coming to Northern Ireland. And that, of course, is the fundamental reason why no unionist can ever operate institutions which by law would be required to implement such a protocol, to accept that GB is a foreign country, to accept there must be checks on its goods, to accept that we must be subject to foreign laws we don't make and can't change. And that is the fundamental essence of the reason why the protocol can never be accepted. Yes, okay, boy. I thank the member for giving way. And to add insult to injury in relation to the protocol, we have language such as last week from Ursula von der Leyen, the President of the European Commission, comparing Britain's actions in Ireland to that of the Ukraine. How the irony is not lost that uh, Britain has led the way in supporting Ukraine in its actions from the dictators in Russia. And the member is absolutely right. But that is the, that's now the ground rules of the operation of devolution in Northern Ireland. That, that is the fundamental premise upon which devolution now has to operate. And that is a premise that can never be bearable or acceptable by any unionist. The truth is, the sad truth is, that the protocol achieved what the IRA and all their murderous campaign could never achieve, a border in the Irish Sea, the suspension of a significant part of the Act of Union. Whether it was their murder 39 years ago of the very talented Edgar Graham 39 years ago today, or the callous kidnapping 50 years ago today of Jean McConville. For all that murderous attack, the IRA never achieved what the protocol achieved. And then there are those in this House who think that unionists should just sub it up. It's not going to happen. 
because we are defending the very fundamentals of the Union when we resist and reject the protocol uh, in that regard. So let's be very clear. A protocol which requires unionists to operate an assembly and to conduct as ministers on the basis that GB is a foreign country is not going to operate with the consent of unionists. And if there are others, be they the government, be they the EU, be they the American president, be the other MLAs who want an assembly to operate, then they need to recognize and accept that reality. It is not going to operate on the basis that GB is a foreign country, that Article 6 of the Act of Union has been disapplied and that we are being disenfranchised from within the Union that we believe. And unless and until those who fail to face up to that reality do face up to it, then this Assembly, quite rightly, is going nowhere. Thank you. I call Jerry Carl. Mr. Ackman, Speaker, I have to admit that today's political circus may be amusing if the cost of living crisis wasn't so deep or if the outcome of the proceedings today weren't so predictable. Um, through this sitting, this sitting might carry some intrigue for the press.